this is my uh, topic, melodic upper structures over bass notes, techniques for linear intervallic improvisation using sus4, using superimposed sus4 triad arpeggios. So it's kind of a mouthful, um, but uh, I kind of view this topic as uh, part of a larger topic, which is uh, just superimposing different um, triad or uh, four note arpeggios over different bass notes to imply different harmony uh, rather than just playing uh, the root third, uh, fifth, and seventh. Um, but I only have like 30 minutes, so I thought it would be cool to focus on uh, this particular triad arpeggio, um, which I've been checking out a lot over the past like three years. Um, so, yeah. um, so these are what I think of as some common melodic structures over bass notes. So uh, like D minor nine, the upper structure from the third would be like an F major seven, and you could put a D on the bottom, and then it sounds like uh, D minor nine. You could also use that as, not as just a harmonic material, like when you're comping, but you could use it uh, like in a melodic context uh, over D minor. Uh, same thing with G9, the upper structure from the third, I think we probably all, all of us uh, have used this voicing uh, for G9, it's kind of a stock voicing, and then at the same time, you can also use this as melodic material. Um, and then, and so on, we have a... Uh, stuff is kind of where I'm coming from. Oops. You know, uh, and then maybe one that you don't think about so much, uh, but you definitely use, is this F major 7 flat 5 over G, uh, which is this sound, uh, which we all use, but maybe we don't think about it as uh, F major 7 flat five, but it's, that's what it is, if you, if you kind of think about it from this perspective, um, as an upper structure over a bass note, that's kind of where I'm going with this other stuff, with the sus four stuff, um, so, yeah, um, and then these are some examples of sus four triads over bass notes that you almost definitely already use. So a B minor 11 chord, if you think about it as a triad over something else, you have an A sus4 triad over B, um, which you can use not as just harmonic material, but when you're playing melodies. And then a similar voicing for B flat major 7 sharp 11, is also an A sus4 triad over a B flat bass note. You can use that in your improvisations. Um, so it's not something that I'm just kind of like pulling out of my hat. It's stuff that you probably already use, and if you just kind of take it one step further and use it as uh, something that you use when you play melodies, um, rather than just your kind of stock voicings that we already have, there's kind of some interesting uh, possibilities for melody using this stuff. Uh, so these are my uh, five positions for uh, sus4 triads. Uh, we're all thinking about our caged shapes recently because of our uh, our new scale test. So this, I mean, also you, you've got a cage shapes for your seventh chord arpeggios for your uh, normal triads like major, minor, diminished, augmented, all that stuff. But you also can come up with five cage shapes for your sus4 triads. And these are the ones that I've come up with. So this is uh, my pattern one. I play everything when I demonstrate stuff from G just because I feel
feel like it's the best, like lowest note where you don't have to use any open strings and you can also ascend through the patterns. So this is a G sus4. the roots in red. Uh, I think it's important to uh, be aware of where the roots are. Sometimes when people practice their, their scales or arpeggios, they kind of just play it from the lowest available note in the pattern, and they're not really sure where the root notes are. But when I practice any uh, pattern shapes, I'm always trying to start from the lowest available root note in the pattern. So in the case of pattern two, it's this one, the one marked in red. Oops. And then I'll ascend back up to the highest available root note. So that's pattern two. Uh, pattern three. So yeah, so how, how do you actually apply this stuff? Because that's cool and all, and there are some examples of stock voicings that we have that contain sus4 triads that you could look at as a sus4 triad over a bass note, but there's uh, a little more to it than that. Uh, and maybe the first place we should look is all the sus4 triads in the major scale, because it's probably the scale that we use the most. Um, does anyone know off the top of their head how many sus4? Five, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, you can move to the next slide. Uh, so yeah, it's there's five sus4 triads in the major scale. Uh, there's one built off the root, the nine, the third, <laughs> the fifth, and the sixth. Um, so any of those, uh, sus4 triads you kind of have available to you when you're just using the major scale. Um, so yeah, again, these are our uh, five sus4 triads um, and my four observations. Uh, the major scale contains five sus4 triads built from the root, the nine or the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth. The roots of all possible sus4 triads in the major scale form an E flat major pentatonic scale or a C minor pentatonic scale. So those five sus4 triads just happen to be the roots, the, the notes, the roots of those sus4 triads happen to be, happen to spell out a, a pentatonic scale. So you have C sus4, E flat sus4, F sus4, G sus4, and B flat sus4. So it just happens to be which is kind of interesting to notice. Um, 
obviously some of the notes in some of these sus4 triads are not in the pentatonic scale, but it's just kind of an interesting thing that it works out that way, and I, I think there's a lot of overlap between the sound of sus4 and the sound of the pentatonic scale. Um, my third observation is that the E flat sus4 triad contains the note A flat, which is the Ionian avoid note if you subscribe to that way of thinking. Uh, so you would kind of get this sound if you have an A flat on top of it. Uh, e flat major is maybe not the most uh, stable note. Um, and yeah, like I was saying before, whenever you're using the major scale, you're using a pitch collection that contains five different sus4 triads. So even if you're not aware of it, you have these, these combinations that are available to you in this scale that you already use. Um, so like I was saying, the, if, you, if you think about it from the perspective of Ionian, you have this A flat, which is kind of problematic. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, so if you if you have five sus4 triads in the major scale, then you have five sus4 triads in any mode of the major scale, which are built on different uh, pitches relative to the root of that scale. Uh, so you kind of have to work out where they fit in the different modes. But uh, in Lydian, you have... Uh, But uh, 
you have this B flat in two of the sus4 triads, which uh, kind of, uh, I don't know if that's really uh, the best note on F7, because you're gonna get this sound. So, but it's great on if you're on F sus, F7 sus, like, uh, if you guys know that tune played twice, where like, there's just F7 sus for like four bars, or any time you have just a two five going back and forth for like an entire bridge, like we see, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, any time that happens, you can kind of reduce it into the, the sus sound of the dominant chord. Um, and then you could use any of these five sus4 triads in, in that context. Um, I only have 10 minutes left. Let's move on. Uh, so also in the melodic minor scale, there's only three sus4 triads. Um, but there's a lot of interesting stuff uh, in the modes of melodic minor with the three sus4 triads that you have. Um, so um, in, in melodic minor, you have sus4 triads on the root, the nine, and the fifth. None of them contain the third or the seventh of C. So it's, it's kind of ambiguous as to whether or not it's C minor major seven. Um, but you could use it in addition to other things that you use in melodic minor. Um, one cool thing is like maybe if you have like flat major seven sharp five and then you kind of combine that with some of the other sus four this might be cool one was that that you just put in with the tr with the arpeggios which one of those was it oh i used i used just c sus oh the c one yeah yeah i, I was using c sus and with the arpeggio with the e flat major seven sharp five cool yeah. sounds good so it could have been harmonic too. <laughs> uh, -huh. uh it could yeah because there's nothing there's no six no so <coughs> there's nothing saying that it's not yeah <laughs> um all-purposely all purpose. Mm -hmm. Right on. <laughs> uh, so this is probably my favorite mode of melodic minor, which I definitely abuse. This is the, the super locrian mode or the altered scale. So the seventh mode of melodic minor, which also contains three sus4 triads. And something really interesting about this is that if you play um, if you play the altered scale in a in a on a five chord in a two five one, and it's a major two five one, so like uh, I have C here, so in uh, F major, like resolving to a major chord, then any of these sus four triads in super locrian can resolve by half step in either direction to uh, any of the five sus4 triads that you have in the major scale, so like C7 something to uh, E flat with G sus over E flat, or uh, A flat sus moving up to, sorry, that one's a little crunchy, but it's kind of Lydian-ish, but uh, it can work. Sorry, I 
thought we were still in E flat. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> uh, so um, on the next slide, I have uh, I've written out some example lines uh, that I just kind of wrote out and came up with. Uh, over 251. So this one's kind of interesting because it, it uses that idea of uh, kind of ascending these sus4 triads um, with some other stuff. So let me uh, come up with some kind of vamp. that one and uh, uh, so this is just kind of like an excerpt in the blues progression so like this is a like bar five um, in a B flat blues uh, and I'm just kind of trying to show some different ways you can you can integrate this stuff um, I want to leave time for questions though because I don't want to I'm like almost at the end of my time so it's just kind of the, you know, kind of just following it up with a little bluesy phrase and trying to develop it. But uh, next slide, cool. And yes, yeah, so that's my that's my thing. Uh, I don't really have a lot of time. Good. You can ask a couple questions. I have a question. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So in terms of like fingerings of these uh, triads. Do you have, uh, well, I mean, I showed you the cage things. Do you have a, like a, a way to think about it? How you're fingering? Because you're covering the neck like so fluidly. Are you thinking that you have some system? Or what do you think about that? So, I, so kind of what I was saying with the, uh, I, I just think about, I think about each region mm -hmm. in, in one of these five uh, sus4 shapes. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I work on different ways to, to uh, to move between them. I have this thing that if you've taken lessons with me, you've probably heard me talk, talk about the circle exercise, which is, uh, I don't know if I'm, short version. Um, basically, if you have uh, 
this pattern one, right? And your pattern two. Then I try to look at ways to make like little circles moving between each uh, pattern so that I can come up with different ways to navigate. So like I'll work on just pattern one and pattern two for a little bit, and then I'll work on pattern two and pattern three for a little bit. And then over time, after I've done enough combinations, it just kind of comes naturally for me to navigate between them. Uh, so a circle might look like, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. Uh, a lot, a lot of the times, I actually, I've tried to eliminate rolling from my uh, technique. So like this one, like pattern two, you might wanna, you might immediately think to roll, but I kind of just like pick up my whole finger uh, and I just try to work on it that way. So I'm really kind of picking it up most of the time, I think. Sometimes you have to, though. Yeah. Well, maybe one more question. Sorry, just so we can get. I, I, I have a comment. So, have you ever, have you ever uh, hammered on like fourths up on the same string, like Alan Holdsworth kind of? Oh, yeah. you know, oh, I don't know if I've done that. Yeah. Um, like hammer on fourths, like. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. That kind of. It's, an, it's a, just another way to negotiate, like because yeah, like, guitar is weird for fourths, you know. Uh -huh. like, yeah. 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 But another question, another comment, I guess. Like, um, Joe DiOrio has. A, book called Inner Valve Designs, where he, there's a lot of these similar vocabulary. So um, if anyone wants to mm. fully check, dig, dig into the stuff, uh, other than writing your own list, which is probably the best, you know, check out that book, too. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I've checked it out, but I'll look into so it. You'd love it. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, one more, one more. Yeah. Are there any particular recordings you've checked out, whether guitar players or <coughs> pianists specifically, that you reference a lot for this kind of stuff? Yeah, so I think I, I kind of just started doing it. I think I, I saw a YouTube video of Gilad Hexelman doing oh, some yeah. like weird like fourths kind of thing and I was yeah. like, huh, I wonder if I just work at all this sus stuff if I'll be able to do that. And so part of that and then I've definitely seen like uh, older videos on YouTube of Kurt Rosenwinkel yeah. playing some sus stuff. I was so, gonna say, yeah, yeah. he talks a lot about it. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. Oh cool. Like I think in his earlier clinics from twenty ten he um, I think he speaks primarily about that. Awesome. Cool. All right. I don't well, cool. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs>